good morning, everyone. I will now call to session the policy. It says policy sessions. It's actually issues and updates, correct? We're actually starting with the policy session. Sorry, policy, thank you. Oh, take a breath. you were running. For Clackamas <laughs> County Board of Commissioners, three flights of stairs, sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm old and out of shape, so there. Ah. Um, uh, <laughs> Gary, would you please introduce the first item? Thank you, Chair Smith. Uh, you are brilliant and wise commissioners. Thank you for all you do. Uh, would you please convene as the Water Environment Services Board, Chair Smith? Yes, I will recess as the Board of County Commission Commissioners and convene as Water Environment Services. All right, we're starting with the policy session. You're sitting as the Water Environment Services Board. This is the West Debt Management Policy. You've already been briefed on this, so this should be a five-minute discussion, team. We have Ron Waringa and Aaron Blue from Water Environment Services to give a two-minute update on what you're doing today. Go ahead. Five minutes to Surprise. two minutes. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. Thank you, uh, Gary. Chair Smith, Commissioners, good morning. Um, Ron Wearing, uh, Assistant Director with Water Environment Services, and I have with me Aaron Blue, our Finance Manager at WES. Um, earlier this year, the Board of County Commissioners adopted uh, a debt management policy to provide further clarity and reflect debt management best practices um, in consideration of the significant amount of debt that West manages, it was recommended that uh, the department be authorized to develop its own debt management policy. Um, and the county's adopted policy delegates uh, that authorization um, to West to do so. We presented uh, the proposed debt management policy to you at issues on October 18th and requested a policy session for the board to further review and consider approval. We'd like to note that this policy guides how West would manage debt and does not in any way authorize future issuance of debt for our capital projects. Um, that's something the commission acting as the Board of Water Environment Services would do in the future. Um, we're here to highlight key policy provisions if desired uh, and answer any questions that you may have. And our request is that the board approve uh, the debt management policy. I'm trying to find it here, so we're just going to take some time. Um, that's not it. Do we have a document? It's under policy sessions, not issues. Okay, so I looked session. at policy sessions, and I, it was the wrong date. Just a moment, commissioners. We're going to take some time for this. Okay, yeah. Tuesday, October, Thursday. It's okay. about it's about 40 pages. Yep, there we go. It's about 40 pages. All right. So, commissioners, questions, comments? I'm okay moving forward. Other commissioners, comments? I just meant options. Approve West debt management policy to direct staff to make modifications or reject it. Commissioners, do I have a motion? Move to prove, move to <clears throat> move ahead with the staff recommendation of approving the debt policy. Seconded. Commissioner Savas has moved to approve the West uh, debt management policy, and Commissioner Scholl has seconded the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Chair Smith? All right, motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gary, what's okay, up next? Chair, would you now reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners? I will recess as Water Environment Services and convene as a Board of County Commissioners. Thank you. you are, we are now under administrator issues and updates. All of these are you meeting as the Board of Commissioners. First is consent agenda review. We have a short list today, so we'll go quick. First is human resources. Uh, and staff, please come up to the table. Item one, approval of an amendment adding functionality to and extending duration of a contract with Prositions Incorporated for the county's e-learning library platform. The amendment value is $131,020 for two years. Total contract value is now $272,030 for five years. Funding is through budgeted county general funds. Uh, Kim Lignori is in Human Resources. Uh, please just quick two minute update on what this is. So good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Kim Lignori. I'm the Workforce Planning and Development Manager in Human Resources here at the county. And I'm here today to ask for approval for this contract amendment with Precisions. 
The amendment is basically allowing us to do two things. <coughs> the first is to add classroom registration functionality to the existing Precision's e-learning content library system. And the second is to add two additional years to the contract to live out the life of the contract. So, so to go from three to five years through April 2026. Um, this would add, as Gary mentioned, the 131 for the existing contract, bringing the total to 272,000. The 131,000 is, again, divided into two separate areas. The classroom registration is 37,000. 680 and the extension of the two years would bring that up the is 93,340 so that's the how the 131 breaks out the no additional funds are needed this would come out of our general fund in human resources and um, that's kind of that's the synopsis of, of what we're looking at you said your general fund in human resources Yes, through the Human county's Resources. general fund. The county's general fund. This has been budgeted for in our last budget item. Yes. Uh, meeting. Okay. Yep. Any other further questions or objections to this moving forward? Um, seeing none. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Kim. Thank Next, you. Health, Housing, Human Services, Item One: Approval of a federal grant award with the U.S. Department of Justice for the Improving Criminal Justice Responses to Domestic Violence, Dating Violence, Sexual Assault, and Stalk Stalking Grant Program and Board Order, authorizing the Children, Family, and Community Connections Division Director to accept the award. Grant value is seven hundred forty-nine thousand seven hundred seventy-nine dollars for three years. Funding is through the U.S. Department of Justice. No county general funds are involved. Denise Swanson from Health, Housing, Human Services. Go ahead. Good morning, Chair Smith, Commissioners. Nice to see you again. So this introduce is... Yourself. Introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Denise Swanson, Deputy Director, Health, Housing, and Human Services. So this is um, pass-through dollars, essentially, for family justice to do wraparound services for folks experiencing domestic violence. Um, and so what they do is help with restraining orders, um, to do things with stalkers, um, and we have data, and I don't have my sheet of paper. I think I left it at my seat on exactly what some of the data is that Commissioner Savas was asking for, but I can provide that to you after. Uh, questions or comments? Oh, somebody's right behind you with a paper. My sheet, thank you. Last minute paper, okay. <laughs> do you want to refer to that, Denise? Yes, so Commissioner Savas, you were asking, this is a continuing grant that ends at the end of this month. And so um, in the last six months with this grant, We've provided 471 people with restraining orders, 150 people received civil legal advocacy, 27 people received criminal justice advocacy, 155 received crisis intervention services, and 182 received victim survivor advocacy. So this is a really important program. Yeah, well, thank you for that. I just, uh, the other thing, you don't need to answer it now. You can send me an email. But I was curious about um, also the folks that are victims of domestic violence that are elder, elderly, Right, so there, it's not really a, a dispute between a spouse, but it's more uh, domestic violence in the home mm -hmm. for elders. So I didn't know if there's any any stats on that, how, how often we come across that in DV. I can certainly find that out for you. That's a great question. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Any, um, Commissioner Scholl, I see you have a letter. Mm -hmm. Does this grant include any protective housing? It's, well, we do have other grants that provide protective protective housing for, um, and actually, and through um, CFC for domestic violence victims. But not yes, but not in this one, okay. no. Any further questions or objections? Seeing no objections. Item two, approval of a federal subrecipient grant agreement to Northwest Family Services for student resource coordination to drug and alcohol affected youth and families. Grant value is $61,105 for 11 months. Funding is through the Oregon Health Authority and $21,105 of that is county general funds, marijuana tax revenue, and behavioral health fund balance. So this is um, part of our prevention services program with um, drug and alcohol affected youth providing resources to them and their families. Any questions or comments? See no objections. Item three, approval of a motel hotel services contract with Terry Kerpa LLC for on-call hotel rooms for temporary housing. Contract value not to exceed $856,000 for eight months. Funding is through Metro Supportive Housing Services Funds and American Fe ARPA, American Rescue Plan Act funds. No county general funds are involved. 
So this is gonna add 24 additional rooms at the Comfort Suites um, that we have access to for folks who are experiencing homelessness, whether it be safety on the streets or for disaster situations like fire or cold weather that we have the hoteling services available. So how many rooms do we currently rent at Comfort Suites? So this, will, this gives us 24 and we have an additional 27 at the Econo Lodge, so we'll have a total of 51. Okay, so the, um, how many times has Comfort Suites been used for this purpose? Ooh. Well, I know 261 people have what? 261 have stayed in shelter, but I'm not sure we've been using comfort suites in the past. I would like to know. I would like adif additional information okay. on comfort suites, if okay. you could. Um, and if we're currently using that for shelter rooms. Yeah, we've been doing it for a while. I know. Yeah. I, I want numbers. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll find out exactly. Right now, we have 50 people currently residing in motelling um, for yeah. shelter. I just want to know specifically to comfort suites. Okay. And maybe Clackamas Inn and Suites, too. Is that being used? I don't believe so. Okay, I think it's the Econo Lodge and the Comfort Suites. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Any other questions? I see no objections. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Next, transportation and development, item one. Approval of a goods and services contract with Topper Industries for the Boone's Ferry Dock Replacement Project. Contract value is $176,291. Funding is through an Oregon State Marine Board Boating Facilities Grant, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife Subrecipient Grant, and County Parks Capital Improvement Funds. No county general funds are involved. Dan Johnson, Transportation and Development, go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Chair Smith, um, Commissioners, and Minister Mayor Schmidt. Uh, this is a Issue that you've seen before you previously, because we had to do an IGA for the funding, essentially this is the contract uh, to complete that work. I can inform the board that the project was advertised in accordance with ORS and LCRB rules on August 23rd, 2022. Uh, bids were opened on September 20th, 2022. After review of the bids, um, Topper Industries was term determined to be the lowest responsive bidder. Be happy to answer any questions you might have. Question or comments? Seeing no objections. Item two, approval of a board order and quit claim deed for tax lot 21E36BA04500 to Mr. David Farrell. Fiscal impact is $280. Funding is through the purchaser. No county general funds are involved. Yeah, $280, um, let me just start there. So essentially we've discussed this previ previously with the board, but fundamentally this is an issue where the, um, the property was uh, secured by the county through tax foreclosure, unbeknownst to the property owner. It's a very small landlocked piece of property, uh, but it's limited to zero to no development potential. Uh, the individual became aware of the issue, um, requested to secure it back for the taxes um, that he hadn't paid the date. Um, and so basically this um, conveys the property, quick claims it from the county, conveys the property back to its original owner. Okay, questions or comments? Oops. Seeing none. Thank you. Uh, so stay here, Dan. All these items will be on your consent agenda for this Thursday. Uh, next, your first main item today, Metro Urban Growth Boundary <laughs> Exchange update and staff recommendation. Dan Johnson will present. There is a memo in your packet. Go ahead, Dan. Okay, I'm going to take a deep breath here. We're going to have a little conversation. So um, the board has been informed of the fact that the city of Tiger submitted a request uh, for a mid-cycle urban growth boundary amendment to add approximately 500 acres of land to the urban growth boundary. Um, Metro COO recommended that Metro Council consider using a land exchange, removing undeveloped land from the UGB and adjusting those lands over to these areas that are um, ready for development. Um, last week, the recommendation from the COO um, was publicized. It's a part of your packet. Okay. Uh, before we go through the options, I guess I just want to just speak briefly to the fact that um, you, uh, state statute dictates UG, Metro's ability to do this kind of exchange. It's allowed. Um, the recommendations that are in the packet before you all include reductions um, within certain areas of Clackamas County. There are three options there for your review. Um, all of them entail or look at uh, parts of Damascus and one includes parts um, of Oregon City as well. Okay. Um, at its core, this is a discussion and it's a discussion around land availability. Um, you know, the right properties, the right place, the right time um, for the various needs that are out there. 
Um, while this discussion is going on, you are all aware of the fact there's a larger discussion going on um, that's being headed by the port about industrial land availability as well. And we're here to have a discussion with you. There are, there are a variety of options on the table for the board to consider. Um, we presented three. Um, one to support uh, the CEO's recommendation, one to reject the recommendation. Um, it, let me back up. If the board does choose to support, um, I would appreciate additional time to discuss um, a couple of options that we have some concerns with. But uh, going back, the second is to oppose. And the third um, is essentially uh, the board's direction to direct staff uh, to go have a discussion with Metro uh, regarding some possible commitments Metro staff may be able to make, um, that we may be able to negotiate with them, that we, that we would then bring back to you for consideration next week. Um, as you can see within the materials before you today, there are four specific topics um, that are outlined there. Um, they have a, they range in a variety of different areas of interest. Some may be possible, some may not be possible. Um, they are basically a start of a discussion we'd like to have um, with Metro about some considerations as they are proposing to take property from our UGB boundary. So I want to draw uh, the attention to the next steps um, portion of the staff report. Obviously, uh, there is dialogue regarding coordination with MPAC. Um, I want to draw the attention of the November 2nd date. November 2nd is the end of the public um, testimony, public testimony period. So under any set of circumstances, we feel we should have uh, public testimony from the board uh, and their opinion on this in, to Metro no later than that date. Uh, so we plan to come back next week uh, and advance the discussion with the board about what that testimony may look like. So. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I have directions. a lot of comments and questions uh, regarding this. Commissioner Savage, your light's on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, you know, what the, the approach that Metro is using here um, is unique and from past, past practices. And it's concerning um, from the aspect of that um, this could be a precedent of more more um, like type models to be used in the future so I, that concerns me we have spent a lot of time and money and effort over the decades to prepare this portion of the count <coughs> this portion of the county for for urban services whether it be the sunrise highway project uh, anticipating capacity water districts as well sewerage um, as well and uh, I was anticipating from the initial presentation from Metro that the properties that they would try to do would not only be on the edge of the boundary and again to the uh, other jurisdiction of Happy Valley it was expressed that if as long as it was in the far, far east of the uh, unincorporated area, they would perhaps be okay with it. But I think a lot of us anticipated it would really be unoccupied land that's, that's not has residences on it or subdivisions on it and so forth. Uh, because they're going to have sewer needs. We have invested a tremendous amount of money. We just had a presentation earlier about our debt. A lot of that debt is on the back of the ratepayers currently in anticipation of future growth. These properties um, uh, would be helping defray that at some point and pay that cost, that fair share of that cost, to reimburse the existing tax base in Clackamas County. So we have some a number of inequities, frankly, here. And frankly, it really, if this was to go forward, would draw into question our long-range planning, our ability to, to re plan responsibly, set SDC rates, set sewer rates responsibly, knowing that you know they could just pick out properties out of this area uh, that we have spent a tremendous amount of planning efforts on. Um, so that gives me great pause, uh, as well as the first part I stated, which was this process they're using is, is not ordinary. So I would like to, I, I favor the, the third option here of exploring all of our options, frankly, um, and to not just um, support and not just, frankly, to oppose this. But uh, frankly, I'm leaning more towards, again, just I want to know all of our options here. Uh, that we can explore uh, because I think there's monetary impacts that are will be unfairly uh, distributed to our, our 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 citizens of this county that have made the investments and the debt and everything else. Thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner Savas. Um, we have Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Just the question. <laughs> I'm gonna put oh boy, this up that's here. a long ways away. I know okay. you're not. You don't have to. It's general questions, so you'll be able to answer them. Okay. The lines around here are is the urban growth boundary correct? And Can you tell me what page you're on exactly? Oh, just page two. There's the three options. Yes. And that one little square on the option one is way at the edge of the urban growth boundary. Is that right? Yes. Okay, okay. Now I just want to make sure I got it. And the option number two, because I kind of know this area pretty well because I spent a lot of years in Gresham, so I recognize in my mind what, this, what, who, what these streets are. But it's just the same sort of area, but a little bit different. It's just directly north of it. Just directly it. north. Correct. Okay. And this on the edge again. And then option three, they don't have... Oh, it is on the edge as well. It's just just a little bit different. And it, and it includes, you'll see it includes the additional area down by the city of Oregon City. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I was orienting myself. And as far as the public comment goes, have we, are we doing any outreach? I'd really be interested. So I'm thinking that we've got the d folks out in Damascus and people in Boring. Have they weighed in? Are they aware? Has Metro reached out to them? What's the public feeling about keeping this, putting this area, taking it out of the urban growth boundary? Um, we've continued to echo to Metro the importance of that, uh, to communicate directly with the citizens in this particular area. To what extent they have done that, um, I'd have to report back to you on that. Okay, uh, and what about, clear. I mean, I would really like to know mm -hmm. what folks feel. I mean, I guess I can get on the phone and start calling people. Maybe other commissioners have other input from people in the community. But I would like to know what, how folks feel about this, because I know this is the issue, right? Is, is do we develop, do we not develop? Do we continue to keep the beautiful natural landscape in the way that it is? Or do you do a concept plan and plan a city? And that's been the issue in Damascus. So I'd be interested to, to know for these residents that would be taken out of the urban growth boundary, what, what, how do they feel about it? So one of the main concerns the staff had was the, in, to ensure the fact that the residents in that particular area understood the fact that this was not a board decision. Um, it's not what? It was not a board of county commissioner's decision. It's being yes, led we by Yes, we were Metro. not included. Correct. Mm -hmm. so, I think you're going to have commissioners address this, so we're going to go ahead with the thank you. Yeah, and I think you're right. I don't think there's been outreach to the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe we should strategize that when we discuss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, what I'd like to do, commissioners, is get everybody's comments and then uh, give uh, staff direction how we proceed on this. We have two more commissioners in the queue and then myself, Commissioner uh, Fisher. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Oh, maybe later. Those okay. were my initial questions. That's right, initial questions. Thank you very much, Commissioner Scholl. Yes, uh, I recall when we had uh, Lynn Peterson here, they had a plan to talk to do public outreach prior to this date. And, but Dan, I never heard anything about the city of Oregon City's uh, response to option number three. Have you heard, received anything on that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, that to me is a big, a big deal. We will we'll research that and get back to you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Commissioner Schrader? Yeah, I also share with my colleagues this issue of not knowing what Oregon City really thinks, not knowing what the Damascus area thinks. I was here when Damascus was included in the UGB, and somewhere in my files I probably have the original concept plan, which might scare you, Dan, but there you go. Uh, and I have not heard from anyone from Metro. Has any one of my colleagues has have even had a courtesy call no. directly with this? No. Oh, I've well, talked to both Christine Lewis, Lynn Peterson. Had I, I just talked to our Metro counselor, so there's right. been Did conversations. They contact, Did they contact you? Did you contact them? I'm just in co constant conversation with people. Okay. Well, that being said, uh, this is such a huge issue. I think all of us deserved a courtesy call from someone. In any case, this is really disturbing to me. And the other thing I find disturbing, having done land use for many years, this is kind of out of sequence with what their normal process is. And um, I'm just wondering, Dan, where is it written that they have the opportunity or the uh, authority to make this kind of a decision? 
uh, is <laughs> because we're, we're because we have a dearth of industrial land, guys. That's the problem we have. Total don't don't we we didn't have enough ten years ago, let alone today, in terms of uh, land for job uh, creation. So we'll sorry. have to research the exact statute, but there is a. Um, there's a statute that requires them or allows them to do a mid-cycle review of the urban growth boundary components. The question is, though, when you do that review, what's the process that you use? So there's no process? And there. Well, it's up to the metro to determine that process. Right. Um, to the best of my knowledge, they haven't done this exchange theory to some extent, historically, um, but it's something they're looking at. And we share, we share similar concerns to those that were shared by Commissioner Savas and all the rest of the commission around this one-off. It like starts in, uh, incrementally kind of pulling properties away. Um, we had been under the impression that they were going to look at a more regional approach to mm -hmm. kind of those reductions. If you remember the information that uh, Chair Peterson and others shared with you about there were other areas around the, air, around the, mm -hmm. the urban growth boundary area. Yeah. Um, and so the, the recommendation um, being solely focused within Clackamas County was um, was it concerning, um, in all honesty, because you know by doing this UGB swap or adjustment, it creates um, anxiety and animosity between a number of jurisdictions on what the gain is and what the loss is, and that was our concern about hopefully trying to make it more regionally spread. So we've kind of been singled out. Well, I can say that you can't say that, but that would be my impression that we have been singled out, and that is just wrong on so many levels, and it is a big disappointment from uh, that. And I'm. I'm convinced that uh, Commissioner Scholl will be a good representative at MPAC uh, to tell them what we really think. Yes, thank, thank you. you for that. I, I agree. Um, so I know, Commissioner Savas, you have your light on, but I'm going to speak first. You know, Clackamas County has key lands in rural reserves and urban reserves. And the problem with this report that you've presented to us today, they are not identified. I think all lands in Clackamas County's urban reserves need to be identified. Industrial lands needs is what we are asking when the microchip task force identifies those necessary lands. And by the way, they have identified those lands. The combination of the, in, the uh, microchip group, they have stated they need large lot requirements of flat land and there's a checklist of all of the goodies that go along with that. And if there is going to be any exchange, we need to select where that will be. And Clackamas County is no longer a donor county that other jurisdictions can come take our land, build the projects that they want, um, other cities and other counties prosper, and what does Clackamas County get? Nada. And that is not acceptable from Metro or any other jurisdiction as Clackamas County is a sovereign county. It's not Metro's call. I don't believe that for a minute. And you take a look at what the microchip task force is doing in the next legislature. Metro has an opportunity to head off what will surely be an embarrassment. Metro knows the recommendations of the task force. And for them not to consider that in Clackamas County is criminal. Metro's in a box with this urban lands situation, with the industrial lands, with the manufactured land use policies we have. Metro is in a box and the region is hurting. We need housing. We need jobs lands. We need industrial lands, and that's all Clackamas County is asking for, is to be treated with respect and equality and been given a head nod for all of the good attributes we have to offer for the entire region and the state of Oregon. The thinking was that urban reserves was taken care of in the urban growth boundary. And guess what? It was not. It is very outdated. But this microchip task force has done the proper identification of urban reserves. 
And the facts are, we have a big fat issue with large lot development for jobs that this state desperately needed. And I suspect that the reason why this microchip task force was formed because Intel moved their headquarters out of state to a different state because they recognized they could no longer expand. So any recommendations that come out of this board, and I agree with all of my commissioners and their statements, that number one, we get a pick. It's not Metro's choice. And I would disagree with your earlier statement that certain things are not possible. I'm going to say to you and the Clackamas County staff, anything is possible. And that needs to be thinking, the thinking going forward as we sit down with our partners and negotiate this. Anything is possible. If there's proper willingness along the nego negotiators in the room, and a proper willingness to make sure everybody is treated equally and we take the lens of prosperity based on the needs that the community and the public are vying for. I think we're gonna come up with a list of recommendations. I certainly have them. Also, I'm going to point to a report that was issued in 2014 from the Economic Development Commission of Clackamas County. And by the way, the Microchip Task Force is using this report. And you know what those principals said? Those principals said, we are not going to redo all these studies that Clackamas County did because they are true today as they were true in 2014. And they have identified Industrial Park area, Estacada Pioneer Industrial Park, can be exit uh, I-5, exit 282, French Prairie, East County, Boyne, Carver, Springwater, Stafford, Borland, West, final West County Swath, I'm not sure what that is, in Molala. And they've been listed as low priority, mid priority, and high priority. And our Board of Commissioners needs to look at that report. This, our actions here today, I believe, need to be consistent, consistent with what we think the, the uh, task force is doing, because we have to. We can no longer ignore the heavy hand of Metro dictating to us what we are going to do with our lands. That time is gone. This, this mode of uh, land use trading that Tiger can come in and trade for, for Clackamas County's Damascus lands of 500 acres, that's an insult. That's a, maybe we should go over and maybe trade for Tualatin or Hillsboro, or Tiger, or you pick your city in Washington County. Maybe we should be a little bit more aggressive instead of waiting here for people to run over the top of us. They are not running over the top of us anymore. This is the sword I will personally fall on because our 430,000 citizens who seek jobs and housing deserve better, and I will fight for that. We have other commissioners in the queue. Savas, you're up. Great, thank you. So to the earlier question about um, that Commissioner Fisher had, which is in the packet um, on each of these, um, a little bit different for the Oregon City one, of course, but so it says here up under the title property owner sentiment, Petro has not yet attempted to contact specific property owners. However, staff is aware through engagement activities and testimony submitted to the Metro Policy Advisory Committee and Metro Council that there are some property owners in the general area that would like to have their properties removed from the urban growth boundary. Mm -hmm. So I, that as a sentiment, I'm sure that maybe some of those would like to, but I think they need to understand what they get and what they don't get or what they might sacrifice. And I'm gonna to speak to that a little bit. I'll send, uh, I'm gonna read one more. Jurisdiction sentiment, this, is one that, this one bothers me a little bit. With the dissolution of the city of Damascus, there is no city that will serve this area. Through the city of Happy Valley has annexed portions of the former Damascus. Those areas are further west, and the city does not intend to annex this area. This, this sentence bothers me. Metro staff is aware that some county commissioners are opposed to any portion of the county being removed from the UGB. Well, okay, um, that might be a summary statement, but you know, every time I've spoken about this, I have talked about the economics. And the economics are not being discussed here. Um, and I don't think that they're sharing with the property owners the economics. And I mentioned the sewerage. I mentioned the Sunrise Corridor. I mentioned 
assess value in the past. But the one thing I want to talk about here is, and Dan, you know this, I know our transportation staff know this, there are, there are property or there are transportation projects that are eligible for funding uh, more so in the UGB than they are when they're outside the UGB. We know that the rural areas, and this would be outside the UGB, so therefore they would be less eligible for transportation improvements and transit and everything else. We know that there's transit limitations if, whether you're designated rural and you're designated urban. So, I mean, not even factoring any of this. This, this requires some thoughtful study and analysis and frankly, engagement of the property owners, and frankly, we need to be aware of those economics, those, those sacrifices, the pros, the cons, the gives, the takes. And, you know, this is, this is, this process, I, I'm kind of shocked by it. Um, so, to, just to say that we're opposed, and I don't know who's outrightly, I'm not even sure any of us are outrightly opposed to anything, I think what we are saying is that Either we want to, see what's, what's in it for Clackamas County? What are the, what are the, what's the compensation? What are the options? And that's why, again, I just go to option three. Uh, let's explore all of our options. Oh. I am, um, Commissioner, I am opposed to these, some of these options. I'm opposed to Metro dictating to Clackamas County what they're going to do with our lands. And I will state again, Clackamas County is not a donor county. Commissioner Fisher. S so if one of these areas is, they're gonna go through this process and the area is selected, and I'm just thinking, I appreciated Commissioner Savas saying the pros and cons, but if they're selected, what is the impact to those residents? They are no longer within the urban growth boundary, so they, but they basically can't do any urban development because there isn't a concept plan. They couldn't yield the benefits of being part of an urban growth boundary because that infrastructure hasn't been planned for or prioritized. But what else do they get? Do they, are they no longer a part of the metro boundary then if they're not part of the urban growth boundary? So fundamentally at its core, they would, uh, according to the report, they would, any area that would be selected would essentially come outside of the urban growth boundary and be placed into urban reserves. So then theoretically at some future date, they may be, may, be, may be able to come back into the urban growth boundary for consideration. So I go to the, the secondary statement is, that was one of the criteria that Metro had had when they came and shared with you is whether or not it had been planned or not planned, um, if in infrastructure and other elements. And um, to go to Commissioner Savas's concern, there are a lot of decisions being made based off the future urbanization of these areas. So, um, there are, and I'll, I'll just say it even further, there are some of these options that we wholeheartedly um, have concerns about. You know, option one and its proximity to Sunrise, um, if, we had, if that boundary doesn't get, isn't adjacent to Highway 212 um, in that area, that could have some concerns about funding availability. Um, and that's a specific, specific concern for us. Um, equally concerning, I mean, it gets down to the fact that what engagement has been done with the individuals that are in that property and what are their, who own that property and what are their comments, questions, and concerns. And that hasn't been heard. Mm -hmm. It's been off what Metro's criteria has been. And I'm not here to speak about that criteria, um, but I'm here to identify the fact that they have identified these areas pursuant to that criteria. So if somebody is not within the urban growth boundary, but they're in within the urban reserves, do they still pay taxes to Metro? So they would have a benefit in the sense of they wouldn't be paying taxes to Metro, they wouldn't be part of Metro, they wouldn't receive the benefits of Metro, but they would also not have to pay for it. There'd be an adjustment of those tax rates that would go. Because if the whole area coming in then would be paying the taxes in lieu of them. Right, but yeah. the, for the Damascus residents or the Oregon City. To whatever extent. They yep. wouldn't be part of Metro and they wouldn't. I believe that to taxes. be the case, yep. So, I mean, those are things we need to hear from the people to mm -hmm. say, what do you want? I, Maybe they would want that. I don't know. I mean, I know for some people definitely want that because I've had long conversations with them. But as a whole, I think that's important for us to know. And I don't know what our responsibility is when there's such an issue of importance for our residents. What's our responsibility in doing outreach to our residents? Just so we're better informed as how we maneuver through this even though we're not necessarily the decision makers here. 
Um, we have continued to echo the fact that um, Metro take the lead in that role and that responsibility. Um, as you've, as Commissioner Savas read throughout the report, that has not been done to a great degree. Um, we have the ability to work with PGA to get the word out about this decision. Um, there is time still uh, within that decision making process. Um, should the board direct us to do so, we, to the extent that we can, be willing to get the word out. I would like that. I would like to know how people feel. Well, of course, I'm afraid, but have you seen the timeline in the report, Commissioner? It's tight. I mean, it is like kabam, kabam, kabam. Uh, I don't disagree with that, but you know, that's the way governments work. Oh yeah, we're gonna outreach, we're gonna get everybody involved. Oh no, we already did that, you're just not aware. I know I'm being sarcastic here, but. Okay. Commissioner Schrader, go ahead. Yeah, Dan, so let's say they take Damascus out. What else have we got left with urban reserves? I think it's the Stafford area, which in my mind isn't you know, there's no city there that wants to annex that area. I mean, that's for, there's only a piece of the Borland area. What else is left out there? I know we've got some uh, potential uh, jobs producing land out in our rural communities, as Takeda, yeah. Canby, Malala. Um, what You're about you know? Well, you say we. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the. Um, a lot of the leaders in this discussion now are about developing those peripheral areas mm -hmm. are the cities themselves. Um, it's their desire to expand and grow and move and, and provide their urban services and have a plan on how they do that. Um, but so you look at the areas that we have, they are few and far between. You mentioned Stafford's there. Um, I believe some area outside of Oregon City is still available. Yeah. Um, and then you've got, you say Damascus, they're talking about that far easterly portion. So there still is an area in there to some extent. In the Damascus area. In the Damascus area, because be I believe Happy Valley is only currently looking with their current comprehensive plan effort. I think it's out to, I can't remember, 222nd or something like that. I can't remember the exact uh, easterly boundary of that. So there would still be some land available there, I believe. But it, you'll note that in the recommendations, we do specifically have a discussion here um, if you look at option two, I believe, we intentionally put the words, um, it's a sentence, second sentence, key reserve areas in there and having a discussion around that as well with Metro um, to see what's possible. <sighs> option two. Are you talking uh, under staff recommendation? Yes, option on page two. one. Can I just read it? Please. The most critical issue right now is industrial land availability. Ensuring the availability of industrial land could be approached by closer assessment of key reserve areas in Clackamas County and the whole Clackamas County, I understand, and a subsequent expansion of the UGB. Support for industrial land readiness must also come through implementation of the actions needed to allow this land to become developable. That's not a bad statement. I, uh, Commissioner um, Schrader, I don't want to interrupt you. <sighs> well, I just have some history with this because um, I remember the south of the river discussion when uh, the Charbonneau and the Wilsonville City did not want to annex south of the river. That is probably still very problematic because I know the French Ferry folks are diametrically opposed to that, but I do have to make a comment that we actually, in what happened, is that uh, some of the best farmland in the world is now having housing built on it in Canby because right. uh, it was kind of a little bit of a, it was a little bit of a, uh, it became very political. They kind of have infrastructure there. So I'm a little jaded when it comes to some of this, I have to say that. Um, I'm wondering, uh, I do think we have to push back. I don't want to make, uh, I want to do this diligently with our partners at Metro. Like I've said, I don't love them, I don't hate them, but they're there. we got to figure this out and work with them. And I'm wondering if there's some kind of a hybrid motion that might be out there that might help. This we're going to we're going to continue okay. we're going to continue on this because, discussion because they're you know the south of the river um, hmm. I I never quite understood that I think there's considerable political pushback however with the with the folks there but it's flatland and it's by a transportation hub you know 
But we don't know what Canby thinks. We don't know if Wilsonville is a willing, we don't know. Um, Commissioner Scholl, I want to continue the discussion on this issue, if we could, um, before we entertain other things. Thank you. Uh, do you wish to continue on this issue? Well, my question was going to be on the uh, what if what if we were to wait until the next uh, Metro UGB expansion cycle? There you go. Okay. Is is that not in 2024? At that time, does not the state law provide for Metro's ability to expand the UGB without doing a land swap like we're talking about here now? And isn't that coming up in 2024? The other question I have for, for you, Mr. Johnson, is uh, the Tigard project that's driving this land swap idea, how close is it to being shovel ready for those 500 acres that they want to build out? Could they just as easily wait until 2024 to uh, see the result of a Metro UGB expansion? Yeah, why do they have to do a swap? Thereby allowing us to keep our property, even though we don't have a plan for development on these three options at this time? I couldn't speak to the other jurisdiction. We'd have to look into that. Okay. But we okay. could assess yeah. that and oh, get back okay. to the board. Okay. I mean, I think that the, they have made a case to mm -hmm. Metro to consider this review. Yeah, I've seen oh. the Washington County memo in the impact package, as well as the Tigard City memo. But again, if we were to uh, acquiesce to one of these three options, just to find out that a year from now, they're still not ready to bill it out. And that would take us within a year of a normal UGB metro expansion that would totally uh, render what we're going through today as uh, totally, un totally avoidable. Yeah. That's we have other commissioners in the queue. In the Commissioner Shaw, have you finished? Yes, uh, and, and I, Mr. Johnson, I understand that some of these questions, you know, you're very knowledgeable, but I don't expect you to have every answer here today. And I greatly appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. I don't think any of us do. <laughs> I think this is probably the first stab we've had of had of uh, what uh, a few future actions on this will be. Commissioner um, Fisher, you're up. Yeah, Commissioner Shull might know more given his role on MPAC, but it's my understanding that this area in Tigard has been concept planned, ready to go, a lot of work has been done. And just, you know, housing is housing and we have a tremendous shortage in the region. So supporting that effort to build the units, I can't recall off the top of my head I, how many units would be built, but it's substantial with this land swap opportunity. And we need that. Relieving the pressure in Tigard helps us in Clackamas for people to have places to live. I would agree with Commissioner Fisher on that. I think it's a bunch of mixed use housing. Housing anywhere helps housing everywhere. And uh, I don't think this board wants to oppose a housing. However, at what cost to your neighboring county who you claim you want to be a good partner with? Um, I, I, th I think that's difficult. I, I don't want to see a delay. I want to see good things done. I want to see prosperity for the entire region, by the way, which includes Clackamas County. You know, I would love to be able to take 500 acres as something that's in our rural reserves and turn it into employment lands. And by the way, we do have 500 acres of flat, buildable land out there. Um, Commissioner Savas, you're in the queue. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Uh, the appreciate the conversation. A lot of the comments and concerns I agree with. Um, you know, the um, I too uh, don't have any quarrel with the uh, with what Tiger's doing and the concept planning and the project that they're unfolding. Um, but there's been a lot of conversation come out recently about the chip aspect, about the industrial land needs. We've known that for years, years and years and years. And by the way, you move all these people in, that's be a lot, 350 acres, that's a lot of housing. And by the way, where are the jobs that go with that? I mean, the disproportionality of adding housing and not adding the jobs in a region 
that has a huge detriment of employment lands. I don't care where you look at them at, Sunrise Corridor, elsewhere, it does, we, that is, that's the consideration that has to be done. And that, that, this just seems not, and I know that Tiger did not suggest this land swap. It was a Metro's idea. But it, it, it just boggles my mind that we haven't really done that in a comprehensive way. So, Chair, I'm just going to, I'm not going to make the motion. I'm just going to verbalize the motion. Why don't you go mind. ahead and tell us what's on your mind? Okay, so what, what's on my mind is that instead of what the motion, as the motion reads, um, about looking at other areas, my, um, my suggestion is we explore all options. So I'm, I'll just make the motion. I move that we explore all options in approaching this Metro proposal. Okay. Um, first of all, there's a motion on the table to explore all options. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Commissioner Schrader seconds it. Now, and then the follow-up on this naturally is, what do all options include? Do we submit a list? Is that what we have in mind? Um, is staff able to pick out from what all commissioners have said here today, and I know that's very difficult, is staff able to pick out what we have been talking about, what our goals and aspirations are, and put that into a quantitative proposal to Metro? Gary? I, I can, based on what you just said. Dan, right. can you? I can. Yeah. You've given us enough here today. And that does not preclude any commissioner going to staff and talking about, well, this is what I meant to say today. You know, this is what I would like to see in the report. And I would like to see a very specific quantifiable ask on this. And, you know, we don't really have to pick uh, maybe a large parcel of land. But I think Paul's right. Everything is on the table. Everything is on the table. And we cannot go forward without making uh, my statement, which the board agrees with, Clackamas County is no longer a donor county. Those words exactly, I don't want it wordsmithed. Commissioners, who was first, you? I think so. You were. Go ahead. Uh, Fisher, please go ahead. So I, I see this land swap as taking advantage of a opportunity that's in law that will allow development in the region. I don't see it that we're being a donor county. I see it as there's a need, there's a step, there's a framework in law and they're trying to move forward with it. Actually, so, we would be a donor county if we wouldn't get back what they're taking. Well, possibly, but I don't, I think the people that live in those areas may want to be out of the urban growth boundary. So unless I know what the residents believe, I'm not ready to say that we're, we may be doing them a big favor. I want to know. I just did some emailing to some folks and say, hey, you know about this? What do you think? Haven't heard back yet. I'm sure I will. Um, but what I do like, Dan, is on your recommendations, you have all these things about um, future look and, and engaging with Metro on a lot of what the values are about prioritizing Clackamas County as a location for future UGB expansions. That's really good. Looking at um, industrial land availability, looking at the flaws in the UGB management system, addressing those and having an I mean, we do have some political leverage. We might not have it within the, you need this many acres for that many acres, but we've got some good stuff here that you've identified for us to engage in. So I'm all about having staff engage with Metro and to really look at what land is developable. And I really also, um, gosh, we were at, well, Dan, you were there till the very end with me, with the planning commission. And one of the issues, we talked a lot about resiliency and disaster preparedness and how do you evacuate an area and where the challenges are. And we know, we know right now that that phase two of Sunrise is really important to evacuate this region in the case of a Cascadia event. So any risk to that planning is a very deep concern and having, having that be expressed is very important. Thank you, Commissioner Fisher. Commissioner Schrader, you're up. Yeah, and I know we, we have to come to a vote with this, but um, I was going to suggest that we get the 2014 report dug out again from our economic development folks, maybe do an update of that. Let's take a look at our portfolio of, uh, you know, employment lands. So we have a, at least have a basis of 
where we are and uh, what we have and why haven't we been able to um, you know, attract folks to that. I mean, again, I go back to Amazon and Canby. They had the land. It was flat. It has a transportation hub. We need to do, we need to go back at some of our past um, work that we've done on this um, to take a look at it and see what's changed and what hasn't changed. That would be, uh, for me, very useful as we move forward. I think it'll be useful for all of us. So we did an inventory. We haven't done an inventory since 2014, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Sure, inventory is mm -hmm. good. Okay, anything else, Commissioner Frater? That's it. Commissioner Savas, you're up. Yeah, just a <clears throat> comment for, based on uh, Commissioner Fisher, Commissioner Schrader, everyone's comments here, and that is that um, in order to answer the questions, what it means to those property owners and what it means yeah. to, I, I think we need to understand the economics, and it seems odd here that that's something that maybe Metro should have done and they didn't do. So, um, and other considerations as far as jobs and how this equates, how this imbalance, uh, disproportionate amount of housing to jobs. This is Metro's work that they should be doing. And here we're finding ourselves, you know, asking the questions and now tasking our staff to do some of that work. Uh, that's unfortunate. So uh, I, I just think that the economics and the services, particularly the services, sewerage, transportation, all of that, are factors that ought to be contemplated by us. And we ought to, ought to have some idea what that looks like. Yes, definitely. Uh, Commissioner so uh, Fisher? Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm clear. I think I understand that we do not have the legal authority to stop this. So I don't want there to be any to stop this land swap. This is Metro's ability under the law to do this. I'm looking back at Nate Goderman, our lawyer in the room, and he's shaking his head yes. So we need to make sure the public understands that, and we also need to use our leverage as a political body to make sure that we're looking out for the best interests of, of our residents that live in our community and for the future as well. But we don't have the legal ability to stop this. Good point. Okay. So... You, is there something that you wanted to say? Would you be so kind as to give me one moment? Yes, go ahead. I love all this. This is great. But, <laughs> but congratulations. On, We've got to get public comments yeah. in in a week. Yeah. Come to my so, office. I'll help you. Well, I, I know. And, and, I, and I'm just having that discussion with you in this forum because we just opened it up to all things and everything. Okay. And so the discussion is more around, I think this, we're going to do our best to achieve the board's objectives and what they'd like to see. We're going to bring back a discussion next week with the board to see if we've if we've met that. Um, that does not mean the discussion is over. I mean, there are that's the end of the public comment. That does not mean that does not allow um, discussions with your counterparts in certain other areas. It does not mean that there's an opportunity for public comment when it comes forward to Metro Council. So I just want to make sure that when you look through that schedule, although that's the end of the public comment period, it does not allow it does not end the discussion there. And there's going to be more discussion that'll be held. So. So we may want to approach this um, with that in mind, and um, please come into my office. We want to possibly make three or four general statements from the philosophy that you heard here today mm -hmm. for this particular meeting, and then we up it again for the next meeting, and okay? Can refine and grow. Refine and grow, and keep pressing the metal to the pedal, keep the pressure on, and really let the citizens know what's going on um, with all this. Okay, Gary, um, what do you think? Yes, yeah, so as, as you just said, there are two immediate deadlines. One is there's an MPAC meeting tomorrow, which we'll talk about in a second. Second is this letter, letter will have a draft for you next Tuesday, although we'll share it with you in advance. So if you individually have feedback, you send it to me or Dan, so we can incorporate that before on next Tuesday, November 1st, you'll formally take a position. But then after that, as Dan said, you've got January, you've got December, January, February, many other road uh, opportunities ahead where we can refine the message. So it's interesting that we have January and February. I initially wasn't the understanding the decision would be made at the end of December, and that's been changed, correct? I mean, that was the first. Based off the information we've received. Yeah. Yeah. So now they have, made they meaning Metro or the governing bodies have said, mm, maybe we're going to put this out a little bit longer. So I think that's very good. So do we have, Dan, are we okay on this? Oh, we're great. All right. Uh, what, what, yeah. 
we, for the next meeting, for the next impact meeting, what we need to present? Oh, well, the discussion is we have, um, there is an update. I believe the impact, pre it's a presentation only of information. I'm looking at the schedule. That's uh, we did an update with Commissioner Scholl um, yesterday. Um, it's a great opportunity, I think, at that meeting to maybe ask some of the specific questions you had around Tiger and its ability to redevelop, et cetera. Um, there's no formal action being taken at impact that I'm aware of uh, tomorrow, um, this, uh, this week. But I guess if there's direction or comments or questions or concerns that you'd like to discuss um, when dealing with impact, this is the opportunity for you to share above and beyond what you've already shared with us today. Is there a motion on the floor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a motion on the floor and we need to vote and um, one of my commissioners is gone, but you know what, we can go ahead and a vote on that and uh, she can play catch up later. Any further discussion? Tony, okay. just a moment. There's a motion on the table. Uh, hearing no further discussion, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Abstain. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye, motion passes, 410. Uh, Chair Smith, I apologize for leaving. I didn't realize we were going to make a motion. and I There wanted... was a motion on the table. Okay. Well, I didn't. That was on the table when I left. I just had to use the restroom before the next topic, and so I'm sorry. That's why I needed to abstain. It was, oh. it was the same motion that we made when you were here. Oh, so you consider might... all options? Great. I will change my vote to aye. Thank you very much for the clarification. So a motion passes, 5-0. Thank you very much for that. Um, thank you. Now, Gary, um, I'd like to discuss the impact assignment right now. Commissioner Fisher has been the alternate for the impact, and I talked to her and I asked if I could do that in her place, and she has graciously allowed for that, but this board needs to make that change. And the reason for this is I want to be more involved with this. I uh, want to be at a seat at the table, and as my commissioners know, I've said it numerous times, I've been deep, um, neck deep in land use issues in the state of Oregon since my legislative days, dating back to 2001 when I first took office and before that because mainly of the injustices in Senate Bill 100, every single square inch in the state of Oregon is zoned for something and we're the only state in the entire 50 states to have this cumbersome uh, land use system that's really prohibiting people from living and being prosperous. That's just my editorial on that. But Commissioner Scholl has done a marvelous job. Uh, I appreciate his leadership on this. I want to be at the table with him, supporting him along the way. And um, as time goes on um, and as this issue uh, heats up, I suspect it will be. So I'm asking for my board if they would agree to me being the alternate at MPAC. Commissioner Fisher? Yeah, so Chair Smith, I don't have a problem with that, but as alternate, I can tell you, it's Commissioner Scholl who is in the room, in the square, in the in the conversation as alternate. Mm -hmm. You just watch the meeting. I am fully aware of what my situation is. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Scholl? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, in the months that I've been the um, representative to MPAC, uh, Commissioner Fisher has uh, help me along the way uh, with some comments and some uh, recommendations. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, do we need a vote, Gary? Yes, a motion and a vote, please. I'll accept a motion. I move to um, have Tootie Smith serve as the alternate to MPAC. Is Mark going to second? Second. Seconded. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Savas has moved that Tootie Smith, me, be the alternate for MPAC, and Commissioner Scholl has seconded the motion. Further discussion? Hearing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much, commissioners, for allowing me to do this. I appreciate it greatly. <sighs> 
Mary, what's Great. next? Thank you. So we'll come back to you next Tuesday with a comment letter on this topic. And then more to come after that. Thank you. All right, commissioners, I know several of you are going to a lunch event. Uh, the next three items are essential, so we'll go as quick as you're willing to let it go. Go quick. Uh, first, TriMet Forward Together letter of comment. Dan will also present this. And Jamie Stasny from Transportation and Development will join as well. Go ahead, please. Just, just body blows. Um, uh, hey, uh, thank you, Jamie, for joining me here today. Uh, we are here to request the board authorize uh, the ability to submit the comments um, that are submitted regarding the moving forward uh, together process from TriMet. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jamie uh, just to bring up a couple of topics and, uh, as quickly as we can and answer any questions you might have. Go ahead. Please introduce yourself. Good morning, Chair Smith, Commissioners, Administrator Schmidt. I'm Jamie Stasny from DTD. Happy to join you today to talk about TriMet's Forward Together concept plan. Um, the memo summarizes the approach so far, but I'm going to cover just a couple um, context points before we dive into the letter. So early this year, staff was engaged by TriMet to understand that a new approach was needed for transit in our region. COVID changed things. It changed where people were going, when they were going there, and TriMet wanted to look at that and understand it better and to adjust their system to respond. Um, that study uh, kind of went quiet last spring, and they came back at the end of September. It was 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, the last Friday in September, and said, hey, staff from Clackamas County, here's what we came up with. Um, that was, what, three, four weeks ago, uh, and we now understand that their plan is to get this, this proposal acknowledged by the end of the calendar year and to start implementing it next year. Our understanding, and this is a correction from um, the letter, as it's stated in the letter, uh, because we learned this at C4 Metro on Wednesday morning, their process, they can't implement all of these changes at once, so they will instead be implementing changes every year. They have asserted that this will serve as the roadmap for those changes, and then each year they'll come back with a proposed slate of changes, and there will be an opportunity for public comment and involvement on each of the phases of change. So I just want to clear, clarify that for the record. Um, staff appreciates the work they've been doing. We understand the need for this, but we have some concerns that are summarized in the letter in front of you. The main one is their process and timeline, as you could tell from my introduction. We are trying to catch up, just trying to understand what these changes mean. And we also have questions about how the public has or hasn't been engaged. There is a survey out, um, but we have seen no indication um, in the buses themselves or out there um, to understand how the public could actually know what's going on and know that a bus that they're sitting on today may not be there next year or in two years. So we have significant concerns about the process and the timeline. This letter outlines those and also asks for a 30-day extension to the public comment period. Some of the high-level concerns are the effects to paratransit service. So when there is a line, a fixed line, uh, TriMet is responsible for providing paratransit service within uh, three-quarters of a mile on either side of that line. When those lines are removed, that responsibility also is removed. How will we handle that? Uh, the county has a transportation reaching people program that picks up um, some additional need. We see that program being um, more burdened without any resource to help um, help us with that. So that's one of our big concerns needs to be discussed. The next is um, essentially the lack of coordination around the shuttles. We've done some great work and our transit team's done some amazing work getting some shuttles going in areas. We're seeing great ridership in those areas like the North Clackamas Industrial Area. There are some of these proposals that overlap partly with those shuttle lines and, and we didn't have any conversation about it. And now we're trying to figure out how would that work and how can we keep up the positive momentum we have on these shuttles in coordination with TriMet. And the last thing that we have is a, a request for TriMet to come and present to you all so you can hear it from them, ask questions, and get a better understanding of what they're trying to accomplish and how we can work together to evolve our transit system. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions you have. Thank you for that clarification. This is a good letter. I'm happy to see that staff has uh, made the comments that you have. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, thank you. Uh, great job on the letter. I agree. Um, well done. And I think inviting them to talk to us about it is a, is a good idea as well. Uh, we, we know that this, I mean, I don't know why the timeline is so compressed in the public comment, but I have one addition. I handed you out a copy. Mm -hmm. It just sim simply adds to the second to the last line above sincerely um, that, um, and I'll just, I'll just read it when it says where we would like to request that TriMet extend the public comment period with, by 30 days to provide space for broader public engagement, and then adding, this is my amendment, 
adding with local residents, riders, as well as other transit providers in Clackamas County that connect to the TriMet service. So that's my recommendation. I've kind of vetted this through staff with further discussion. So um, if there's no other questions in the interest of time, I'm happy to make the motion if there's acceptance of that. Commissioner Savas, please make a motion. Okay. I move that we approve the letter to TriMet with the amendment made. Second. Thank you, and you have a copy of this? Okay. Uh, any further discussion on the motion on the, t uh, excuse me, Commissioner Savas has made the motion to add language to the TriMet letter. Commissioner Schrader has second that motion. Any further discussion? Did you read it because the public doesn't have it and I don't have it. Okay, uh, he did, but I will, I will read the additional language. I'm sorry, if you just read it, I missed it. I apologize. Yeah, okay. I'm zoned out. I'm sorry. That's all right. Never mind. Yep. Yeah, Commissioner Savas, it, basically it asks to engage residents, riders, and anybody else who uses TriMet. We can't ignore that. Absolutely. Any further comments? Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Next, Freshwater Trust Letter of Support. Dan will present. Go ahead, Dan. It's a 12-foot tall culvert that's not fish friendly, that somebody else wants to pay for to replace. Yep. We have a letter of support here to them for a grant, a grant they are trying to secure to improve our um, fish passage elements. It talks about the importance of this project from the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife um, to the extent that um, they have, the, we have partners, meaning the Freshwater Trust that are looking to support that, fund it, and if they're able to get that funding, it's a great project. And the letter is online that anybody can read, and it's a collaboration between the Freshwater Trust, Clackamas County, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, the U.S. Forest Service, and the City of Portland, and we are helping in the effort. Commissioners, any further comments on this? I'll entertain a motion. I move to uh, approve the, the, uh, the letter of support. Second. Commissioner Savas has moved for a letter of support of the OWEB funding request for Henry Creek Culvert Replacement Project, and Commissioner um, Schrader has seconded that motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much, Dan Johnson. Time thank, for lunch. Thank you. Nope, not yet. Next, 2023 House Wildfire Committee support request from Lane County. Uh, let's see, Daniel Nybauer, Disaster Management, Trent Wilson, Public and Government Affairs. Go ahead. Good morning, Chair Smith, Commissioners, Administrator Schmidt. Uh, we're here today with a letter of support that are signed by uh, so far, with the logos of other fire-affected counties from the 2020 wildfire, it's a request to um, Speaker Rayfield to continue the House Special Committee on Wildfire Recovery, which was created after the 2020 wildfires, to respond to those wildfires to which we had um, significant impacts. The desire of that continues. That committee was put up sort of ad hoc so that it would be responsive to that singular event. But as we know, that those, all those responses and the needs to continue that are not done yet, not only for Clackamas County, but in other counties. And I think that as this letter outlines, we'd like to see a further consideration of how to prepare for so that those next events that we are anticipating, that the state is anticipating moving into the future. So we're here before you today because this really is a 2023 legislative topic. You have not yet approved a 2023 state legislative agenda. So it's just kind of this, you know, gray area season where uh, we're looking for your direction to support this letter. I think this letter is a very good one. I think that we need to support our other counties who have experienced a lot of timberland and wildfire. And um, does this letter have anything to do with the maps, the famous maps? Well, this committee helps direct the creation and formation of the maps. And so we know that we, there are some concerns that we've had about with those maps presently. And so having this committee um, alive and moving forward creates some level of accountability at the state level for that. Thanks, Trent. Just quickly, and we need to move on. Um, have those second go around of the maps been made public? Daniel? No, it's, they're still in process. Okay, thank you for that. Commissioners, any questions or comments about this letter? No, Chair, I move for approval of the letter. Yes. Seconded. 
Uh, Commissioner Savas has moved uh, for approval of the letter uh, support request for Clackamas from Lane County of the 2023 House Wildfire Committee. And Commissioner Scholl has second that motion. Any further discussion? Tony, would you please call the poll? Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much for coming forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we still have a little time. If we could do the advisory board uh, and commission appointments, please. Tony, go ahead. The Aging Services Advisory Council has four openings on their commission due to resignations. They have one recommendation after a recruitment process. That recommendation is Michelle Castle to a first term. So moved. Second. Commissioner Savas <coughs> has moved Michelle Castle <coughs> to the Aging Services Advisory Council. Commissioner Schrader has second that motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Up next. Up next will be the Clackamas County Community Health Council, staffed by Health, Housing, Human Services. Uh, recommendation is Janice Sabin to a first term. I'll entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Savas has moved Janice Sabin as the appointee to the Clackamas County Community Health Council. And Commissioner Schrader has second the motion. Further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. What's next? Last ABC for today is the Veterans Advisory Council, staffed by Health, Housing, Human Services. Currently has nine openings on their commission. Recommendations are as follows. Donnie Heldland, Carol Bernhard, John Budau, Adam Kosrabadi, Paul Edgar, R.B. Green, and Lori Kimmel to a variety of terms. Move to approve the appointments for the Veterans Advisory Council. Second. Commissioner Scholl has moved the appointments to the Veterans Advisory Council. Doggone it. Just a moment. <laughs> Donnie Headland, Carol Bernard, John Budeo, Adam Karop, Sabi, <laughs> Polygar, R.B. Green, and Lori Kimmel. And Commissioner Schrader has second that. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Last Get item, if you want to take time, is Commissioner Communications. Who wants to speak first? Chair Smith, I'd like to mention some things about MPAC. You would like to mention something? Some things about MPAC. Yes, sir. Tomorrow afternoon, we have our next MPAC meeting. Yesterday afternoon, I met with Jamie Stasny and Dan Johnson. We talked over the issues. Now, what's up on the agenda tomorrow is a briefing from Metro on the UGB exchange uh, considerations from the uh, county operations officer, uh, <coughs> Metro. Uh, also, the 2023 RTP high capacity transit strategy uh, briefing from Metro, and then finally the TriMet Forward to Gather Service Hours briefing. Now I'm to get uh, some uh, update on comments from the staff this afternoon, and I'll share those with you by the, by the end of the day. Yes, I would okay. like that yeah, very so much. You're, so you know what I'll talk about tomorrow. Right, afternoon. and um, yes, I just want to take everything in and yeah. observe and so forth. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Any other commissioner would like to opine? Sure. Yeah, let's go just, ahead. Just quickly, yesterday was the second regional tolling advisory committee. Um, all the top transportation people, electeds and others, not electeds that are part of that committee. Uh, we did not make it all the way down the agenda, but one of the things that was on the agenda that we did not touch on yesterday was the discussion of the charter, which requires a signature 
and as currently drafted without changes suggests that who, when we sign that as a, at least my role as a jurisdiction representing you, it's, re, it's basically a requirement that we agree with the tolling program at, in, a, in a certain framework. So I just want to warn you that we will have this, my guess is it's not going to be on the, it's not going to be a, re, a discussion for a required signature next month because we didn't get to it this month, but that that's coming. And if you're, uh, if 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 you support my idea of, uh, I don't really believe a signature is really required, um, especially when they don't have enough detail as to the rates and the impacts. That is premature to sign the document. That's my present personal mm -hmm. recommendation. But for a later discussion, we can discuss this at another time. But I just want to just plant the seed. Mm -hmm. Not looking for any approval at this time. I would agree. I don't think we need to be signing any documents regarding tolling. And your instincts were right on that, Commissioner Savas. Anything else, Commissioner Schrader? Um, yeah, yesterday I talked with my community economic and workforce development community. We're going to be getting together with NACID uh, to do some programming at the national as well as the local level. NACID is the group of professionals that work with housing and urban development. And so we are looking uh, very uh, deeply at what uh, requests for uh, for dollars is coming forward from the national level when it comes to housing. It was a good conversation and we do plan to keep those connections up. I also had a chance to listen in on the Eco Economic Mobility Leadership Networks for part of the time. Uh, I had a bit of an emergency the other day uh, where I ended up uh, in the veterinary emergency clinic all afternoon with a puppy that uh, we believe may have swallowed something but came out okay. So thank you for covering for me. Oh, that sounds after, wonderful. After dinner, I was pretty done. <laughs> it was like having a, a child again in the emergency room. So thank you, um, folks, for taking over the, the planning commission last night. I just didn't want to go anywhere after sitting all day in a, you know, wondering if my puppy was going to be going into surgery or not. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, just real quick, the Metro Oversight Committee met yesterday morning for the homeless services measure and some of the more interesting things that were talked about, and I'm so thankful we are so repre well represented on that council with Dan Fowler at that as part of that oversight committee. They were going through what will be the, what should be in the reports from the different jurisdictions to report back to the Metro Oversight Committee. and really good questions about, well, what are we measuring? The number of people that we are housing or how we are reducing homelessness and how are we moving forward with what's called built for zero, which will keep the data on what are the specifics of all the unsheltered people. And what the Metro staff was really pushing back on is like, well, we don't really, we have an inflow coming. We don't have the data on the inflow. But we would have, we will have the data on the inflow through the built to zero framework, which I know Clackamas County is well on the way to developing, and the other jurisdictions are on board. So that is what, what I was taking away from that meeting is a very important conversation. The pieces that the Metro Oversight is really interested in looking at are what are the um, investments and outcomes as the key, and then there were some other criteria. But they had a really good discussion. And at those meetings, commissioners are not on camera, and we're not supposed to talk. And they did go through their, you know, what are our meeting agreements? And I just thought, man, you know, it just feels like, I didn't say this, but it feels like as a commissioner, you're put out in the hall and trying to listen to the lesson. Ah. So that we can, you know, report back to our commission. And I kind of get it. Politicians can dominate sometimes, and that's that's not good. But at the same time, it's we do have a political perspective that is sometimes yes. very useful. And thank you for doing that work as well. Thank you, Commissioner Shaw, for your work on MTAC and all of the board members who are all doing a lot of stuff. Last night, the Board of County Commissioners did have a dinner with the Planning Commission. And my big takeaway from that was, we were able to talk about our perspectives and our concerns. And I think what the Planning Commission learned and what I learned is we're seeing the same issues. And the Planning Commission may not have been aware that the Board of County Commissioners see the same land use issues that they do. They see RVs that are parked on 
private properties. We were able to talk about what we want to do with that. And they are able to see all these houses and apartment buildings being popped up. And so I think we may be left with the understanding, yeah, we, we do see that. We are as concerned, and I remember one of the planning commissioners say, oh, you notice that too? I says, oh, absolutely. And so I think we're going to try to engage the planning commission in support of legislation as we go down to our next session and on land use bills and anything that they have had an interest in because I think their perspective is very, very good. Uh, maybe even more so than us, although we could certainly do that. And they're eager. They're very eager. I offered them to letters of support on, from the Planning Commission on particular legislation. And that's already happening with PGA and uh, I think uh, Dan Johnson's shop. So that was just a really good, uh, really good on that. Seeing no further business before this commission, we are adjourned.